perspective that, that, that Gavin brings to the, the, the labor uh, management relationship and the way to go about it is a very, very positive one and represents uh, a far better one, a far more constructive one than, than some of the more traditional and old style and I dare say out of, out of style uh, approaches to this. So the best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. That's kind of us now. So South Africa, uh, 2015, lots of uncertainty, lots of movement, lots of change. The beginning of 2012, after a protracted negotiation between the National Union of Mine Workers and the Party of Platinum on the Platinum Belt, lasting the whole half of 2010, an agreement is concluded six months after the implementation of their wage agreement. Rock drill operators, I'm a pawn door from Ponderland, refused to come up from underground. Started to engage with their management with a demand then of 8,000 rand across the board in the midst of a newly concluded collective agreement. That strike rolled on for six weeks, five people died, and in the end the company threw some money at the people. And, but the strike wave rolled on, rolled on right across the platinum belt. Collective bargaining institutions which had been the stellar institutions of our new democracy. Twenty years later, across the platinum belt, gold sector, etc., those very institutions were ripped to the ground by unprocedural, unprotected industrial action. We know that the dependency ratio of mine workers expanded dramatically in that process as they started to now manage both a family from the rural areas of Lusikisiki, Flagstaff, where they came from, in seas of poverty. They drove themselves into deeper and deeper debt. Uh, we want 12 and a half thousand rand. Because everybody's been trying to work out, where does this come from? And this manager told me this amazing story of how they had approached them and kept coming back and back on this 12 and a half thousand rand and kept insisting, as they did it in Parlour and as they did everywhere. This is an issue between us and management. It's nothing to do with our union. The end result is the collapse of collective bargaining, the defiance of collective agreements, uh, unprotected industrial action, the emergence of workers' committees. So let's not think that this was an umku led issue. This was a revolt from the ground to deal with what they felt, those workers felt, were the most pressing issues of the day. So we have multiple unions emerging. We have new volatility in the labor market, competition between unions for membership, new militancy. This process starts to drive a realignment in the labor movement politically. Effectively, uh, a split breaks out between effectively those who support the continuation of the alliance, or rather, the compliance of the union movement to ANC and or SACP dictates versus those who are trying to, the Numses and others of this world, who are trying to restore some level of independence from the alliance that was uh, forged in 1990 at the time of the unbanning of the ANC. We need to ask ourselves, what is going on in the institutions of the labor markets that they failed us in our hour of need. What is going on in the company where a company management, the frontline management, have no capacity to persuade, to influence, to stop, to redirect, to pause, to negotiate? And employees say, we walk away from this company and we take this issue into our own hands. The core of what we're going to talk about and the core proposition I want to put in front of you tonight is that 
the collapse of union democracy, the collapse of accountability to members, the collapse of intellectual knowledge of the production process itself has led to the dislocation that's going on in the unions. Equally, the collapse of frontline supervision's managerial capacity over people problems. And when I say frontline supervision, I'm not talking about the boardroom. I'm talking about the person you clock into every day as a worker, your supervisor. That's how you see the company. The alienation of the members from the union, the alienation of the employee, same member, from the frontline supervisor is what is at the heart of the labor market crisis. So the alliance itself promotes a culture that if you can get into the insider club, bye-bye to our Mugwenias, bye-bye. I have made it. In the 80s, an HR guy was a guy who took minutes in a meeting while we engaged with production management on our conditions of employment. Today, HR is this band of professionals. They've ballooned to manage this new complex law. And when you look at them and you ask them, who do they manage? Their domestic workers. They manage their domestic workers at home. None of them come from production. None of them understand how to build a bolt or a widget on a production line. They're HR specialists. That's not their job. It gets worse. Their job is to deal with the union. So when you go and ask a production manager, do you deal with your employee problem? If your employee, can you read an employee's play slip? Can you say what this, is, this deduction on a play slip is? Can you explain that to an employee? If an employee has a problem, can you address that problem immediately or say, hey, bro, I can't do it for you now, but I'll tell you by the next shift. I corner. That's not my job. It's a labor issue. But I'll tell you straight. That is a labor issue, i.e., it's an issue you take to HR. And I can go into thousands of factory-based examples of the lives of workers in factories, which both the shop steward and the HR manager are busy in the institutions of the labor markets. They don't deal with that messy stuff on the ground where employees work and live and experience every day. They have separated themselves. And worse, they are codependents. That's the core of it. They're dependent on one another for their future viability, for their future survival. The more an HR guy can scare his CEO with stories of how bad the union is, the more stronger his job is. It works like that, guys. The workplace is where we have to start. That is the building block of our future. And the workplace is a source of the generation of value. And when we generate value, our responsibility is to say how value will be shared. We're the only country in the world that is effectively outsourced Management of people to a service department called HR. We've outsourced it. And to the union. Creating that relationship on the floor and that line of sight between um, all of the stakeholders and that economic consequence in collective bargaining of how we distribute this cake and creating visibility in terms of financial disclosure and openness and honesty about the problems. We haven't even started that game. So if we do not do this, all I can guarantee you, as sure as night follows day, more conflict and every single stakeholder fights for its slice. And there is no visibility. And there is no accountability. And there is no honesty. And there is no integrity in the conversation. But unless we can get 
at a sectoral level to accords, compacts, and visibility in terms of economic consequence. If you remember one thing, remember visibility in terms of economic consequence. That what I do affects you. What you do affects me. And we have to do things together to grow what's bigger than both of us. That kind of conversation needs to happen. But beneath that skepticism is a search, I believe, for finding the virtuous circle in your company, for being able to walk into your plant and not see your employee as an enemy, or vice versa, to be welcomed. And that doesn't come because you can sing in Kosi Sikili. It comes because you have been there for them. We've got to say this is who we are. We've got to put our financials in front of them. Not every, not in a kind of a speech to try and convince the union in a pre-bargaining conference that we've got no money. That's how it's done. Opening up the ownership box, opening up the profit sharing box, creating a culture um, in which Team South Africa has a chance to win is an absolute imperative, in my view. The absence of that, recessions might come, recessions might go. But at the end of the day, we are doomed to spiral downwards, stripping each other as we go, until there's not much left. Thanks very much.